I was very fortunate. I met a gentleman by the name of Jim Berenson, who was one of the doings of voices here in Australia, uh, who said to me, uh, his good friend Bill Armstrong was uh, looking for a young guy who could solder wires together and knew about valves and resistors and things. So the next day I went down and met Bill. The following week, the uh, St. Patrick's Day, 1965, I started at Armstrong's um, and haven't stopped pedalling since. So, uh, and Jim Berenson uh, was my mentor and still is, lives uh, in Adelaide and still does voices and, um, you know, taught me the values of the voice and I can remember the very first recording session that I did with Jim and I, I, I learnt sound recording from Roger Savage and Bill Armstrong. Um, and Philip Adams came along and said, Bill, you've got to build a studio where it's just for voice and get this little red-headed fella and get him doing advertising, radio commercials and television soundtracks. So um, uh, the very first session I did with, with Jim was for the Australian Wheat Board. And then would, Jim would come in with the script that he had a direct relationship with the client and gave me the script and said, here it is, and this is what we're doing. And uh, so he went into the egg carton sound room booth and um, uh, stood in front of the microphone. I pushed the button and said, take one, Jim. And he stood there and did this. Uh, take one, I'm rolling, Jim. Uh, can you hear me? <laughs> and uh, he took out his Dunhill lighter and his Marlborough cigarette and flicked it in the air and whoosh, landed on his mouth and he lit it. He said, Jim, uh, I'm ready to go. <sighs> Philip, we haven't talked about the script yet. I'm a voice, you've got the roller and you're going to record it, but how are we going to do it? Do you want me to yell at you? <laughs> do you want me to speak quietly like this? How are we going to do this? We need to talk about the words and we need to know who the listener is. In this case, it's farmers. So maybe I need to be a little bit more natural, not an announcer. Let's sit down and have a coffee and talk about the script first. Lesson learned. They don't just go in there and do it. We talk about the script first. That was a big lesson. And um, then working with wonderful writers like Peter Harvey from Cleminger Advertising, then on to Osteria and what have you, who wrote all the Kent cigarette stuff and Pete still smokes Kent, um, Peter's ice cream and all this type of thing. And so we were working with people like Ken Sparks, radio people and what have you. Uh, a number of years later, I was very fortunate enough to be asked to go to London to help set up a radio, um, not a radio, a recording studio over there to produce radio commercials because uh, radio was just being commercialised in, in London in those days, in the 70s. Um, and I was very fortunate, once again, somebody came along and tucked me under their arm, the great Arthur Lowe, that taught me more about voice and direction and John Cleese as well, the way he liked to work with people for his voice and characters when he was doing soundtracks, not visually. Um, Kenny Everett, um, who just was radio back in those days and syndicated radio. And so it was learning from these people. But always these people said, and Philip Adams was the very first person to t teach me this way back when I started with Jim, was the listener. There's only one listener and who is the listener. Um, and once you understand that, you can have the voice that talks to that listener, even though it's multiplied many, many times over with the years. I think one, one of the things back when I started was the radio scripts had to have a word count. They were counted. They had to be done. A 30 second commercial, I think, was no more than 75 words, which would fit comfortably in 30 seconds. And now we're getting 80 and 90 words, which have to be tightened up. And of course, 
people aren't always thinking about the listener um, and the situation they're in to be able to get the full message. If you've got 30 seconds, a 30 second message, it's got to sell something other than just tiles um, or white goods and what have you. And we just, in those tile commercials with Frank Walker, all we need to know that he's having yet another sale and if you're interested in tiles, come along, you know, to his six um, places. The same with Harvey Norman. Um, but um, those commercials even don't have to be fast and furious for me as the listener, because I'm a listener. I wake up and still do with a different radio station each morning to hear what's happening and who's doing what, etc., etc. That's my homework that I can then take on to a client script and say, well, that voice that you've suggested is also doing these ones, but we have this voice here uh, who I you know, we can work with and create something different. We've got to break that mould of too many cloned voices mm -hmm. and find the interesting voices. That's always been my thing that I was taught, you know, the right voice for the right words, the right product. 